Hi there, I'm Stacy, the encaustic mixed media artist behind Studio Stacy. Today, I'm going to be taking you behind the scenes to see what is behind these two barn doors. If you happen to miss the previous episodes as far as what was behind that barn door and that barn door over there, I will link them up there so you can go check those out. Now, what was behind those two barn doors was a lot more organized. So, a um, bit of warning here, if you're a very organized person, you're gonna have to excuse the mess behind these doors. All right, here you go. Don't say I didn't warn you about the mess. But behind these, both of these doors is where I keep all of my stuff that I use with encaustic. And just to give you a little bit better perspective, it is the middle two doors there. So they're the easiest accessible and that's why all the encaustic stuff is kept back behind those two doors. I think what I'm gonna do here to give you guys some ideas is just to go through each shelf. So this first shelf has all of my pan pastels along with the um, cases that I use for the little um, ink dauber pads and things like that. And if I pan over to the next shelf here, this is um, Punchinella, which um, you can use with encaustic, makes some really cool textures. I apply the encaustic paint through the Punchinella, and then when you lift it off, it reveals this uh, really cool texture, and then just lightly fuse it, and you have a whole nother texture to the piece. And then I have a bunch of ephemera and things like that in the, this big bin. And from that shelf, panning back down here, um, sometimes I put my fans and things like that away if I'm not using them. So um, this is a nice, big, flat storage for the fans that are normally in the windows. And then here is just a stack of various papers that you can use with encaustic mulberry papers and rice papers and all of the good stuff there. And more stacks of various different papers and then um, even more paper. And this is um, Awagami. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Hopefully I am. But they make some amazing papers if I can get the camera to focus. <laughs> um, they make some amazing papers to use with encaustic. If you're not familiar with them, I highly recommend checking them out. Really cool company. And then um, this is some wire mesh that I can make little sculptures and things like that with. And then I will pull this bin out, but it is a lot of a collage materials. I believe I have said this before, but I hang on to a lot of bits and pieces. And I also like to root through things. So I don't have a whole lot of organization to stuff. But that is what's in that bin. A lot of different paper scraps. And speaking of paper scraps, that takes us to this shelf, which you guessed it, has more paper scraps in it. And oh, I should mention, these little um, tickets here 
I was in a swap forever ago and I just, I couldn't get rid of them. So I've just stuck some various ones on the studio shelves to, you know, just a little added decoration to them. But getting back to these bins now, you'll see they are <laughs> stuffed to the brim. And again, there's not really any rhyme or reason to what's in here. I just root through the stuff. Just root through looking for the perfect thing. This bin is actually a lot of um, pattern paper, like the, uh, the paper, the little thin tissue paper that you use to make patterns with, and also a bunch of tea bags. All right, so scrolling over to the next shelf. Again, <laughs> more paper scraps. <laughs> uh, yeah, just lots of paper scraps. And then up top here, I have these little mini encaustic uh, vessels and bowls. And I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do with them. They hold a lot of um, different scrapings and things like that right now. Eventually I want to do something with the bowls and make them um, more decorative than just the plain encaustic medium. But um, they're just kind of fun little encaustic vessel bowls and they're completely made out of encaustic. Here's some more of those tickets across the top there. And then Right next to those encaustic bowls is my RNF encaustic gesso that I use 99% of the time with most paintings. And then of course my griddle, this is where it goes when I want to um, just store it out of the way if I'm using the large work table for something else. And then I thought I would show you on top of this griddle, let me see if I can put the camera ground and grab it first. Okay, this is a metal um, printing plate. And the really nice thing about this is because it's a light color, if you want to make prints and things like that, you can just heat this up. I usually just heat it up on the griddle. And then I just run the encaustic paint over top of it. And then you can lay a piece of paper down and it will pick up the paint. It's a really cool fun effect. I don't think I have any videos of me doing this. Um, maybe I'll do that sometime. But they make fun um, collage papers to use in your encaustic work. I, I decided to do a quick demo of how this plate works. So I've got the um, griddle heated up and the plate is directly on the griddle. And then I have just some plain old clear encaustic medium and then a couple different colors of encaustic paint. And then lastly, I have several different uh, papers. Some are a little bit thicker like this watercolor. Some have some ink and things already on it like this paper. And then some are just some thin, um, Japanese rice and mulberry papers. This one just happens to be a red mulberry paper. But um, yeah, I'll show you how it works and we'll get to kind of just playing. The printing plate is hot because it's on the griddle and it's heated up. And so I just take the encaustic wax and uh, draw on it or scrape it across it and it just melts into it. It's a really cool um, thing. And then you just transfer this right onto the paper. And you can either do this or here, I am using a brush on it. And the brush also works quite well, as you will see. And there is then no need to fuse with the torch afterwards because this printing plate is already hot and the wax is already melted on it. And you're putting such a thin layer down that there is no need to fuse with the torch. So it's a really cool way to 
use a paper and not have to worry about paper burning <laughs> with the torch and then you can also scrape into this printing plate i use um, like rubber spatulas and things and that way i don't scrape the plate with any metal Okay, here is that print that I just pulled off of the printing plate. And you can see it's nothing spectacular, but it's just kind of a fun little thing. And this is just happens to be on a regular, plain old, inexpensive copy paper, like just your normal printer paper. Um, so I think it'll be fun. It's obviously nothing complete and done, but I think it'll be fun to continue to rest, mess around with it and hopefully use it in another bigger encaustic piece, maybe as a collage element. And here are a few more encaustic prints that I did. And you could see if you layer them, some of them have become really see-through. This is some of that rice paper and it was a cream color. So it's kind of looks to me a little bit grungy, a little bit dirty, but kind of fun. And then here's another one. So just some more. These are some prints that I pulled after the original print. So when the plate wasn't completely cleaned off, I just pulled, kept pulling some more. So yeah, just kind of a fun little play session. Only took maybe about, I don't know, hour, hour and a half to make all of these and um, not even probably. So there you go. That's how you use the printing plate. Okay, panning from that shelf. Back over here, here I have more tools. I have all of my torches and heat gun and some spare torches back there. One can have, never have enough torches apparently. Um, so that is basically all encaustic tools. And then coming over to this shelf, I have some extra paint tins back here. That's what these little guys are. I have various uh, wood pieces that I've just, you know, collected over time. Who knows where they came from? <laughs> um, some white encaustic medium. That's what's in both of these. Some tar. And then these are um, the little clips. I can't remember what these are called, but you can get them at the hardware store and they're really nice. I hook them onto my tins a lot to then when the tins are hot, I can pick the tins up. So I have a whole little bowl of that there. And then um, I think I said painter's tape back there and then plaster of Paris, two containers of that. This is um, that plaster wrap stuff and paper clay, all kinds of stuff that you can use with encaustic. And then I have some clear encaustic medium, some extra clear encaustic medium here already made up and ready to go. And again, some more paint tins. And then this is black here. And then the very last thing over here on this shelf is a, again, a, another bin. And this time it is a bin of fabric. I really like collecting these um, metal bins. I think this was an old uh, vintage locker bin, but um, you'll see a lot of my stuff is in these and um, various other different antique kind of bins. But again, no rhyme or reason here. It is all fabric, some doilies, some um, already has encaustic on it. Like this has encaustic on it already. Um, no rhyme or reason, just a place where I can root through and uh, find the perfect piece of scrap fabric to use. Okay, coming down to these lower level shelves here, I have a, another um, old kind of vintage container. This again has more paper scraps in it. So let's see if I can move this over. These actually are all empty. 
And I used to try to organize, quote unquote, <laughs> my paper scraps, but I found that it was just, it was too tedious. And like I said, I'm a rooter. So I just like to root through stuff, kind of grab what speaks to me and then go with it versus just having like, say all the pinks or all the greens or letters or, you know, things like that. It's just, it wasn't, didn't work with my intuitive process. So anyways, scrolling now over here, that is um, of course my griddle that I use. And then coming down to this shelf, this is a lot of things that I have gathered out and about in nature that I use in encaustic. And I will pull some of those things out and show them to you. All right, so I have things like um, these leaves. These actually came from a household plant that we have here, and I just decided to hang on to them for whatever reason. Um, of course, some twigs. This is um, some lavender that was growing in our yard, or actually still is, but um, have that there. And then this is a bin of various different feathers. more feathers, and then, uh, what do you know? <laughs> more paper scraps. <laughs> Don't judge me. <laughs> I also have collected various uh, flower petals, either from out in our yard or different um, flower bouquets and things like that that I've gotten over the years. And then I have um, newspaper kind of in between them. But these little containers keep them pretty nice. And yeah, you can use flower petals in your encaustic work. Last thing I wanted to talk about with the, as far as the things, natural elements, this is actually from Colonial Williamsburg. And there's little cedar, if I can get them out of the bag here, they're little cedar uh, shavings. And I have not done anything with them yet, but I am just dying to do something with them. And um, when you go there, they're, you know, carving all kinds of stuff and they will actually give you these cedar shavings. So it's kind of a neat, um, highly recommend Colonial Williamsburg. All right, I am down on the floor here on the very last shelf. And on the very last bottom shelf, I have a huge bin of tar, some extra extension cords, which I actually usually keep in this bin, but you know, it just doesn't, don't always get put back. Um, again, this is a old vintage wire bin. And then I just made this um, fabric liner to go in them so things don't fall out of the holes, obviously. And scrolling over, I have the fire extinguisher. Now, when I do have the wax out and the torch going, the fire extinguisher is not sitting down here on the bottom shelf behind the barn doors. So don't worry, I'm always being very conscientious of safety and it goes onto my work table. Easily accessible, just in case. Then in this box here, there is some extra packing material and extra, extra items that I take to the various art shows. Scrolling over stencils that I use with encaustic. And last but not least, magazines. Specifically, mainly National Geographic magazines, old National Geographic magazines. Thanks so much for coming along. I hope you enjoyed seeing what was behind the barn doors and taking a little tour of my encaustic area. If you did, you know what to do. Smash that thumbs up down there. I would so very, very much appreciate it. If you aren't subscribed and would consider doing so, I would also very much appreciate that. And if you are subscribed, but aren't getting notified every time I release a new video, click that bell and that will send you a notification. And as always, thanks again for coming along. We'll talk to you soon and bye for now.